Hey Westside, this is Pastor Ralph, and um, a little bit later than I want to be, but I have the opportunity to share a meditation with you on um, Mark chapter 14, uh, beginning in verse 53. And um, we are in the midst of Jesus' um, arrest and um, really the sham of a trial. And, um, you know, the God who comes to set the world right to establish justice, righteousness, um, does it by being the victim of complete unrighteousness, injustice. Um, let me read these verses for you. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests and elders and teachers of the law came together. Peter followed him at a distance right into the courtyard. There he sat with the guards and warmed himself at the fire. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus so they could put him to death, but they did not find any. Many testified falsely against him, but their statements did not agree. Then some stood up and gave this false testimony against him. We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with human hands and in three days will build another not made with hands. Yet even then, their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, said Jesus. And you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes. Why do we need any more witnesses, he asked. You've heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as worthy of death. Then some began to spit at him. They blindfolded him, struck him with their fists, and said, Prophesy. And the guards took him and beat him. This is a, a sham. This is done in the darkness of night. This isn't done according to the prescriptions of how justice, that, that they're listening to contradictory testimony. Um, Mark clues us in. It's the opposite of what Jesus said. You know, Destroy this temple three days, I'll raise it up. But he wasn't referring to the physical temple. He was referring to his own, his own body. But Jesus stays above it. He does not get involved in the injustice because he's come to establish justice. There's one question that he answers. Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? Um, are you the promised anointed one that will be called the Son of the Most High, the Son of the Blessed One? Um, not that they literally thought that he would be the son of God, but, but he would be this one who God had chosen. Um, that was the question. And, and Jesus comes back and he says, I am. And he speaks the truth. Then he goes on and he actually is taking a reference from the book of Daniel. And he says, the son of man sitting at the right hand of the mighty one and coming on the clouds of heaven, which is really significant as far as the Old Testament prophecy. And in Daniel, you have this call of, you know, explanation about these kingdoms that will rise and fall. And then there will be this one like a son of man who is this divine figure coming down. And, um, and their response to it is, is that, wait a second, you're claiming to be more than God. Now, the, the reality is, is that, they weren't looking for truth. They were looking for anything that they could have to, to put him to death. And, um, and the irony is, is that the truth was what they rejected and was the means and became the means by which they crucified the Lord of glory. The, 
I come at a passage like this, and I mean, this is the part where, you know, we just come out of Easter and we know the other side of the story. But I think it's always good, you know, just to remember what Jesus was willing to do. I am so sensitive to the injustices that get done to me. And, um, and yet Jesus kept his focus on his Father's will and the bigger purpose that God has for him. And for me, that's when I'm reading this today and I'm thinking about Jesus and the call for you and I to be formed in the likeness of Jesus. Will I take the high road when I look at the injustice that's happening around the world? And will I sit there and say, what does God want me to do in this? Will I, will I refuse just to react? Will I refuse to just be angry at the wrongs that are being done? Instead, will I look at it through God's purposes? There's a lot of injustice happening in the world today. There's lots of question mark. There's lots of attacks against truth. There's lots of corruptions that we can speak of. But will I stand above it and not sink into its level? And will I choose the way of righteousness? It's the way for us. We're following Jesus. So let me encourage you, but also challenge you. As you face injustice, as you face personal attacks against you, instead of just getting angry, practice turning the other cheek, practice focusing on God and his call and trying to think through that situation that you find yourself in. Lord, what do you want me to do here in this moment? How can I advance your purposes? Let me pray for us. Lord Jesus, as we look at your love and your strength and your courage in your life, even as all these false attacks were leveled against you, you did not play their game. You did not sink to their level. In fact, you even allowed yourself to be the victim of injustice. But you did it because of the call of God on your life. May we be committed to God's call on our lives. Give us strength. Give us courage. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless.